right, everybody out there in YouTube land. This will be the start of our next video after our four days here in Alton. We're heading over to the fuel dock. I figured this would be a little easier to just fill up the gas cans like this. So then when we go, all we have to do is go out under the bridge. We don't have to make that left turn over here. Try and do a 180 and then head that way. So, we've got our two normal cans. I picked up an extra can. We were supposed to have another extra can come, but it didn't come in time. So, Amazon's cool. They gave me a refund, and whoever gets here to the Alton Marina when it comes, I told them uh, there's another looper just donated to them. All right, so we use the standard marina key that you use at everything here for like uh, the showers or the pool. Open. Right now it's not open because of it's getting cold and it's the end of the season, but it would normally be right there. So here's their big fuel tanks. It's kind of cool. They float. I wonder if that's like a safety. Thing. And then it uh, can move up and down with the water. That's cool. So, I'm not sure if that then gives you the ability to, uh, like if there's a fire, you can just uh, drop it. There's a big gas one and then a big diesel one. Pretty cool, and then there's the guy from the Alton Marina heading over. So once we fill up our tanks, the fuel tank in the boat is already full. So with this much good till at least after uh, the chain of rocks and maybe Cape Gerardo. I mess up these name pronunciations so bad. So, but wish us luck. Get the fuel here and we don't blow up or anything. Of course that won't happen. <laughs> so we'll get these filled up and then I'll head back over to the boat and I'll just heading out under the bridge. Alright, we got our fuel. So we should be good to go now. We get a looper discount on fuel as well here. 10 cents off a gallon. So Alton Marina is definitely super friendly to the loopers. If you're going to do the loop, this is the place to stay. Buy one, get one, night. And then 10 cents off gas. You can't beat that deal. So, we're going to go get over to the boat, and I'll be back. We are all checked out. You just drop your key in the box there, and then you're good to go. So now we're going to go on to Lock and Dam number 20... Six or Melvin Price Lock and Dam. It is the newest lock and dam on the system. And it is the biggest one, they're double lock. So it should be pretty cool to check out after going through all the other locks. So once we get to the boat, we'll call them up on the radio and then we'll head out down the river. One more shot of what it looked like here at the Alton Marina. We were on I Dock. Or our memories in the future when we're 90 and we look back on this. <laughs> and then the big sailboat next to us, that guy's name was Kelly and he had his dog Blue. And they are awesome neighbors. And then the guy on the end in the houseboat, I didn't get to get his name, but he's an awesome neighbor as well. good to have the mast up. It's a relieving feeling. Once we get the sails out and everything and we'll kind of get everything adjusted more. So she looks like a traveling boat now with the jugs up and everything. She's a 
fine vessel indeed. So we're gonna call on the radio, check out the lock and see what the situation is. And then we'll head on down and get a good shot of exactly what it looked like while we were here. pretty cool place so I'm gonna call on the radio and then we'll get moving all right we're heading out under our, the mast of Jolly Roger flying so after that rain it actually looks like we got a little bit more water here when we came in it was like eight and a half feet so now we're at nine and a half so I'm liking that definitely liking that I think I'll throw the keel down once we get out here a little bit because it's a little windy. But we'll see how it is. Thank you, Alton Marina. You were good to us. Uh, there's a northbound barge coming here, so uh, we have to wait till that gets by. And then we're good to go to head on down. Here we are, headed to Melvin Price Lock and Dam. I'm gonna have to move up the boom here. It's not as up as high as it should. That'll give us a little bit of a better view. Here we are, we're getting close. After this, there's only one more lock and dam, and then we're done with them all on the Mississippi. All right, this is the Melvin Price lock and dam. It's the newest one, and instead of doors, they have a thing that comes up from the bottom. That's pretty cool. Headed down to uh, tonight, there, there it goes. We just get it high enough to stop the water. Kind of cool. So now we drop. Down, down we go. This one makes an eerie noise. I don't know if that's the pumps or what that is. Oh, it's the floating bits as they creak down. That is cool. Creepy. Make quite the eerie, eerie, eerie noise. Noise. At least once you drop though, the wind isn't as bad. At least now we have our flag. And I'll be able to tell kind of what we're doing more. I was saying there's no wind and then all of a sudden it pushed our front end over the bow over. You can pay attention. I don't want to end up being like Austin Powers in that movie where he's in the hallway in the little golf cart going back and forth, back and forth. We're not that big though, so I don't think it would be that tight of a fit, but it would still be a pain. Not, far, not sure how far this drop is. A nice deep one. I'm not quite sure how far the drop is. It'll be interesting to see how this door works if it's something that comes up or if it's a door. I'm not positive how this one works. Alright, all done with the Melvin Price lock and dam. So we just gotta wait for the 
corn and then we can head on out. circle here and let this barge get past us so we don't have to worry about it and uh, then we'll keep on heading down the river. At least that's the plan. That's the plan. We're about eight miles from the chain or eight or nine miles from the chain of blocks dam which is the last dam on the Mississippi. On the upper Mississippi. ended up being a tricky spot of the river. There's a whole bunch of pieces of tree in the river here. There's actually a whole tree. So I'm trying to go real slow. And be careful and not hit any big pieces and just get over here into the channel. That's the plan. Well, we have safely get navigated that one of the sign up here say we'll see when we get closer but yeah those are the trees we do not want to hit behind us tell that's what we just came through there are brain 
Roaches everywhere. Must be because it's the end of the Missouri River and everything is just kind of deposited here. Okay, to the left there it says lock with a big arrow. You can definitely tell these currents too where they join. Uh, you'll be going and you'll get into one of them kind of like eddy or whatever the, they're called and the river's swirling and the boat will start to <laughs> just kind of fun but it'll swirl like right on its axis in the middle better view up above the Boom. The boom is too low. This is my view. So uh, the boom's got to go up higher. It should go up like another two feet, I believe. So then you can see underneath it. So onward we go. All right, so here's a closer close-up of that sign. So you definitely see there's a sign that says lock. So you know. made this canal. I'm not sure what year I'll have to look it all up so that you could bypass the uh, chain of rocks there or the rapids. I don't know why they didn't end up putting in a dam, a lock and dam there, another one instead of having it like this. Definitely, definitely tell how far the river is now. We're coming up to our first bridge on the uh, Chain of Rocks Canal. This made me think, I wonder what people think when they see a sailboat with a pirate flag going through here. It's got to mess with people. But I bet we'll definitely be a little more memorable now with the pirate flag. People will see that. Although we were a sailboat with the mast down with a tarp or a bimini, so that probably was pretty memorable as well. Sadly, I didn't bring the cloth canvas umbrella thing for the uh, bimini. I brought the cover. And, uh, so we're going to end up using that tarp again. Daryl and Larry we've been talking to. Uh, he sent me a picture of a prototype for an enclosure. And it was pretty, I was uh, way impressed. It's amazing. So it be kind of cool to see how that comes. So we are having to pass two barges here and there is not very much room at all. We're over to the side and we're actually in five and a half feet, five feet of water to try and make sure that they're, they have enough room and we're safe. But uh, oop, there was one. It's causing the silver carp to uh, go nuts. <laughs> we must be going right by where they're all at and they're just like, fuck you. Sorry, I swear. So here we are. It's a little intimidating. We're kind of going down this and we have to go right by the barges. And uh, we're actually in four and a half, five feet of water. And uh, it's causing the silver carp to go crazy because we must be in such shallow water. They keep jumping at us. I'm hoping maybe I'll get a good shot of it for you. Definitely not much room. Ooh, there was one. But, uh, yeah, we're dry. They're going crazy here. <laughs> so, here we go. Nice and close. We're in four feet of water. I'm imagining, normally, this would be, you know, way, way deeper. Get by these two barges. And I'll hopefully, 
hopefully get through lock and dam number 27. I can definitely say this is the closest we've been to a barge. Throw a rock and hit it. Well, it looks like we're headed north. The lock is closed and we're trading south of there. Sucks. And then we hit a rock. Rudder popped out. That should be a bar, not a cable. And, uh, the rudder mounts are messed up. Uh, luckily, when I read, the rudder mounts are super, super secure. And what happened is the rudder pin sheared, and the rudder popped up and out of the, and then went sideways and was kind of hanging there by that, kind of doing circles. Uh, luckily, I was able to grab it and hold the top and the bottom, and then that side piece kind of stabilized it. And I was able to turn because in this channel, there's barges everywhere, and there was a barge coming. And stupidly, I have my radio and I put it up there, so I couldn't reach up to grab it and hold the rudder at the same time to tell them to watch out. I wasn't under control. And, uh, it was just a really not fun experience. I'm just glad we're not sinking. We're not taking on water or anything. It just happened a little bit ago. We're, we got all the way down the channel, right, right at the last part there, right before the lock. Uh, said eight feet, eight feet, bam! And uh, I don't know if there's a log under the water or uh, rocks or what, but it's it was not fun. I didn't feel it hit the keel, which I would think would have hit normally first because it's they're pretty close to the same depth. I think the rudder's just a teeny bit lower and maybe it was just right there and it hit the tip of the rudder and that's why it didn't break it off and pushed it up because it's got that rounded edge. So maybe it hit that round edge and then popped it up real hard and then that's why that happened. That was not fun at all. So, we're going to continue on. we got to head back north through this channel. And, uh, about 10 miles. Hopefully we'll get there. Like I said, we're not taking on any water. But we cannot anchor in the channel. And the lock is closed at night because the bridge is bridging the river south of here. So we have to get through during the day. We sat there after all that situation, and then I got to the lock, and I'm like, okay, cool, we get through the lock. It's not too much farther after that. There's a little spot we can eat around the side of the river and just chill. And uh, that did not happen. We sat there for like a half hour waiting for barges that were following. And, uh, hey, um, wait for the barge. Barge got through, and then the guy came down us hear him on the radio a shift change the new guy came on and he said sorry you can't go river's closed you gotta go north you can't anchor in the channel oh boy especially after that i need to just anchor my arms are so sore after holding that rudder and steering it was just insane i can barely hold this phone up to record um, and as you do that Play in it now. And to go straight, you keep going left, right, left, right. So, we'll follow this barge for like the next two hours and then we'll get out of the. There's another one that was sober carp. We'll get out of the chain of rocks canal and then we'll be able to do a little more assessment on our damage and if we got to make an insurance claim what we're going to do. We have to make an insurance claim. Our insurance agent is going to love us. Especially after all we went through to say, hey, we need insurance. But it doesn't look like it's that. It's just the connection the cable from the steering wheel to uh, the rudder that broke the metal part. But it still works. And uh, then the dungeon the uh, like rubber mount on it, kind of, they broke, 
until they're plastic, not rubber. They both of those broke and are just gone. <laughs> so, plus when they hit it, pop those, hit and then uh, crack those, and those fell out. And then, uh, that cotter pit just sheared and poof. I'm glad that cotter pit is sheared though, because otherwise there's a good chance it would have broke off the bottom of the rudder. Over part of the and that would have been bad. Hopefully the bottom of the rudder is okay and not cracked. Sorry, the sun. Um, but we're gonna have to wait till we get up out of the channel of uh, King of Rocks here, and then we'll be able to do our damage assessment. So the day started out so amazing. You know, we got our sail up, you know, to, uh, and all that, and uh, then that happens. But I definitely. When you look on the shore here, how shallow it is right now, you can see there's those logs that sit there in the rocks, and uh, it wouldn't take much for it to go on and all of a sudden, boom, just enough to hit. But also being so shallow, you just you just never know. It's, it's a challenging river to say the least. Well, at least following this barge. It's a lot easier and not have to worry about it being too shallow when you go, when you're trying to let them pass. I'm wondering about the, uh, the man. Well, everybody, we made it to anchor. That was quite the eventful day. My arms are beat. I guess I didn't realize how much force a rudder goes through. Uh, final damage assessment, we're all good. Just the gungeons for the rudder are messed up. And then the cable that goes over to the rudder. There's a metal sheath, and that broke, but uh, it still works, so we're good. Now we can get some new uh, gungeons mailed to us at Green Turtle Bay uh, in Kentucky Lake, and we should be good to go. But uh, yeah, it was kind of disheartening, isn't it disheartening? I don't know, whatever the word is. Discouraging, going through all that. Having the rudder pop out after hitting a rock, getting like right in front of a barge almost, and then like grabbing it, and I had to grab it, and I guess it's hard to show you, so I had to grab it, and the only thing that was holding on was the cable, so you had to like reach down and like grab the front of it and hold the side of it. And that would keep it going kind of left and right. And then with this hand, I grabbed the top of it. And then I'm like hanging off the back. And then you're able to, you know, hold the top and the side and the front. And then you're kind of turning it. It was pretty crazy. But uh, we did it. We got through it and we didn't die. <laughs> so that's good. And then uh, once the barge was able to get by, we were getting out in the middle of the channel. And then you guys saw the video. So... But then it kind of sucked. We got down to the lock and dam. And the river is closed south of here till morning because of dredging. So uh, they said, you got to turn around. So we had to go back 12 miles. And now we're chilling. And uh, 